Hello and welcome to the chaos. And in this week's video, we're going to be painting on reusable Starbucks cups. Because when I was at work after Christmas, they were giving these away because obviously they can't use them anymore. And I figured that they'd be really fun to paint on and make some cute little travel mugs. So I have three. I think I'm probably only going to be able to get to two of them because, spoiler alert, they do not like to be painted on, which shouldn't have been hard to guess, but eh. So that's what the plan is. It should be fun, and I will see you over there. Hello guys, so the first thing I went ahead and did is just gessoed all over the cup. I did both of them at one time, but can't really see that. And I pre-sketched out my design so that I wouldn't have to try and curve it on the cup because I'm not great at trying to draw on that surface. So then what I did is I took a stick of charcoal and covered the back with charcoal so I could transfer it onto the cup by taping it on and then just tracing over it with a pencil. So it makes it a whole lot easier to get the design you want and it transfers over pretty nicely. And then all you have to do is go in. So the one thing about this is that when I did try and put it on, the gesso was not completely dry. So when I tried to draw it on, it just started peeling the gesso off. But it didn't, it peeled it like in an outline. So then I just went ahead and gessoed over the whole thing again. And it turned out fine, but I had a little indent, which was honestly kind of fun to work with. It was, it was new, but it was fun to work with. So now I'm going in and just doing a background color of a nice light purple, just around everything that I don't intend to paint. So I did a little bit off, off camera, but I did start to Posca in my Venus flytraps, which I think are just the cutest. And if you've been watching any of my other videos, you might see a resemblance between this and a journal that I got from a spooky box unboxing, the most recent one that I did. And it is heavily inspired by that because I just absolutely love love the Venus flytraps and the design of it, so I was heavily inspired by that. So I'm going in with a darker shade of green over my lighter shade to kind of give it some depth and some shadows. And then once I've gotten the basic outline of it, I'm going through and just adding some shape over my blobby Venus flytraps. And then just finishing in coloring the surrounding leaves. And finally filling in their little inside mouth part. I think I'm going to call it a tongue. It's kind of like a tongue. Their tongue. And then I'm starting on my moth, which starting in white over gesso is not the most entertaining thing that I could have done. But I think it looks really nice to have kept that area white. And I really wanted something. To, I really want to be able to start at the edges and like work my way in. So if I could, if I needed to change something, it would be easier. <laughs> and I'm just going in with a gray on the second layer and then a light blue for the actual bottom wings. And this kind of reminds me, like the color scheme of this moth kind of reminds me of Corpse Bride. I don't know, I, I know it's butterflies in that movie, but this color scheme on a moth just screams Corpse Bride to me, and I absolutely love it. So now I'm going in with that same light blue on the top because I want to keep it kind of cohesive. And then I do go over and do like the butterfly lines that they see you have on their wings in a dark blue. 
but then decide quite quickly that I hate it. So I go over it with a light blue again and kind of blend it out to make it kind of a softer color. And I think it looks much better than this. And then the final, like, wing, the top of the wing, I do in a dark purple to kind of finish it out and tie it into the background that doesn't really make sense for this drawing. But I like it. I'm happy with it. And for the little antennas. So now I'm going in and adding the details on the body with the goddess symbol and a couple of just little dots that I think help it look really cute and a little more cohesive. And now I'm going through and just adding some lines throughout the bottom of the wing to give some detail to that gray area with my super fine Posca pen. And adding a couple of little dots around to kind of add a cutesy look to the moth. And this is when I promptly decide that I need to do an outline. I wasn't planning on it originally, but it feels like things were kind of getting lost in the background, so go ahead with a thin black Posca pen and just start outlining everything. Outlining is so satisfying. It makes everything look so complete. And it doesn't matter like how rough it looks prior, adding an outline just seems to make it much better. It fixes everything. Fixes all the mistakes. So now I'm going in and doing my little sparkles, and I wanted to try something that I actually learned from a tattoo artist when I was getting my tattoo done. And it is kind of like the, was it the point art, where it's just a bunch of little dots of like little points of color, and it makes a painting. Well, you can do that with the little sparkles with a bunch of different colors, and it kind of makes it look like it's shining. And it's really awesome. It works really well for tattoos. And I've never tried it with paint. But, I mean, it can't be that much different, right? Like, it's still the same. And I don't think it turned out quite as nice as my tattoo did. Granted, if I would have waited for the paint to dry in between my little dotting sessions, it probably would have looked a little better. But I'm still happy with how it turned out, and I think I'm going to be trying it again later, in another future one where I have a little more time to work with, but I think it still looked good. And now I'm just going in with my silver Posca, which is my favorite one, and filling in my other little designs, and then starting to fill in the vines and the leaves around the heart because I had realized at this point that I had totally forgotten to do them. Now I'm just going and adding some little highlights along the vine and on the leaves 
in my light green. Uh, it's more of just little dots for highlights because those leaves are already really small. But I think it really added to the effect of it. Alright, and now for my favorite part, going in and adding some white highlights throughout everything. Kind of makes everything look shiny and very cartoony, and I love that. So, yay for white highlights. Of course, we are gessoing. And then I have drawn out the design that I want to do, and voila, here it is. Again, we're doing the carbon transfer, carbon transfer with the, the charcoal. And I am struggling immensely to try and get this one to work. I had no problem putting on the paper the first time. But with this one, I had problems. But now I'm just tracing out my design onto the cup by following the design that I have on the paper, and it'll transfer the outline along with plenty of smudges because I can't not rub my hands all over. But it still works. It gives me what I need. Ta-da! Right, now I'm going through with a with the black Posca versus the Sharpie that I tried to use on the last one, and about 24 hours of drying time. And after that, it actually does not peel up the gesso. You just have to wait and not be impatient, which I struggle with. So I'm just going through and outlining everything so I have a really good idea of where everything goes before I start painting. And here's the final outline, so now I can get ahead to painting. And I started with doing my background color of just this nice light pink, which took way too long to mix up, even though it is literally red and white. I always end up with too much red to white ratio, even though I know it's just a toothpick doot of red to make this pastel pink, but I struggle. But I finally got it with only a handful of wasted paint, so. And then I'm gonna go through and also paint the top of my coffin to match it, so it keeps everything nice and cohesive. And then I'm just going to leave my sulfur symbol as it is, because I'm gonna do that in black, and I believe I did that off the screen because I had to charge my camera and didn't want to wait to continue this project because I liked this one a lot. Yes, now we've filled in our sulfur symbol on the coffin and also done the edges. And now we're going in and painting the sun. Not the sun, that's a moon. I know words. Painting the moon with my silver Posca. 
And I just, I love how metallic-y that the silver Posca works. And it works to kind of separate it from the gray. Because I use gray quite a lot in my art. I like, I like gray. It's a good color. So I love being able to use the silver for any of the background details and kind of giving it some separation. And now we're going to go through and also fill in all of our little sparkles with the silver as well to kind of keep our theme cohesive. And I did skip over, well, actually I did not skip over painting the smoke, but I did an entire video where I showed painting an entire pot in smoke. So I figured I didn't really need to show it here again. And I did have like a hour long recording of it, but nobody wants to just sit and watch just that for an hour. So now I'm going over the moon and the sparkles with the kind of teal color that I used for the bottom part of the smoke here. And it looked, it looked okay. But it kind of took away the metallic part that I liked, so I went back over it with silver and then kind of smudged over it. So it had like a blue tint to the silver, and I love how that turned out. It turned out much better. Though the amount of paint on my hands after this was more than normal. <laughs> And I'm usually covered in paint, so that's actually saying a lot. Ta-da! I am so happy with how these guys came out. I think they are just the cutest, and now I feel like I want a collection of adorable travel mugs because these are what I use for coffee 90% of the time, because a cup is just not enough when I need coffee. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like below and maybe consider subscribing. Maybe, maybe. Right now, because I have one more thing I'd like to talk about before the end of the video. And that is starting next week, I'm going to be live streaming on Twitch for St. Jude. There's going to be a second video going up at the same time as this that I'll have linked to tell you more about that, but I did want to shout out here because this will probably be the one that gets seen more than the other like two minute video. So please watch that and consider subscribing and consider donating to St. Jude because they do amazing things. And I'm aiming to reach $2,500 before the end of May. So, thank you. Have a great week. Stay weird. Bye.